Greetings in the precious name of Jesus to all our wonderful viewers. As we welcome you to this program, we release the peace of God in your homes or wherever you view this program. In these difficult times, giving up is not an option. We must fight the good fight of faith. Keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. As you do so, the chains of fear, anxiety, hopelessness, and confusion will drop powerless behind you. To our viewers, we love you. Continue to protect yourself and family. Adhere to the advisory given and stay safe. Welcome to Choices. Cover yourself and family under the blood of Jesus. God bless you. God bless Guyana. It is important for us to remember that we are living in troubled times. And uh, these times require a certain behavior forthcoming by the citizens of this country. And I just want to read a portion of scripture taken from Proverbs, two portions of scripture as for that matter. Proverbs 12, 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Proverbs 28, 26 went on to say, whoever, whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. We, we live in a time where um, we hear persons asking for a certain behavior pattern food coming and people continue to violate the core food they continue to violate the whole idea of social distancing can you imagine um people you know you coming from the creek you, at, and at, at certain hours and so person are not thinking and so when you behave like that you not only put yourself at risk but you put others at risk bishop i think it was you last night in the bible study who said you're hearing vehicles behind you and i think that's after seven o'clock vehicles driving up and down so people are not listening they're not complying and so if we continue to act in such foolish manner we will continue to suffer and so we want to extend this call again for persons to con conduct um, themselves properly notwithstanding all of that though we are seeing signs of hope and um if, if we look around we see persons are recovering i think when i looked at the number of persons over 15 persons i heard in the news this morning um who have been recovering that is a sign of hope that a sign of hope it doesn't mean that once you contract this virus you have to die you have to just comply with the rules and the regulations and uh, and we can live. So we have people out, out there who are working. We see the establishment of centers, uh, mobile units now, so we could have a more kind of aggressive testing. Those are those are signs of hope. And we still have the, we still have those points of needs where people need to comply with the rules and the regulations, and where people just need to practice all the me measures that were asked given to them, so that this country could survive and this country could live. They could live. And, and we could all enjoy a future. I, I, I... Sorry, I would like us to benefit from your wisdom, our collective wisdom. Why are some people still not obeying the rules of the curfew? Anybody can, is there any reason that you can share with us? Anybody's got any wisdom so we can speak to it? Why we seem to have folk who are refusing to um, submit to the parameters established by the curfew? I, I, I will say, I'll give you two that I heard. One, I heard one gentleman say, if I must dead, if I got die, I will die. If COVID got carry me, so what? Um, I've also heard um, folks who have said, don't trust the advisory. People trying to control your life. So there is, so don't bother with them. We have a life to live. So let us continue to live. Um, 
Those two I have heard myself coming from the mouths of individuals. They don't seem to be logical. They don't seem to, those comments don't seem to exercise any deep thought in the process and evaluation and critical analysis, but they seem to represent a segment of our society that believes that all of this might be hoax, or if I should die, let me die. I, I just want to add my bit. I don't know if it's a case of uh, people feeling invincible and that they cannot be afflicted by the virus because um, like you mentioned um, last night, Bishop, last Friday when we distributed masks in the Workmanville Lodge area along Joseph Polydor um, Street and Lodge, there were several persons who bluntly refused to accept the mask that we were distributing. Mind you, it was, it was free. Um, it is still free. It was tested by doctors who confirmed that it was well made, well prepared and suitable to prevent the easy transmission of the, of the virus. So persons refused to, um, to accept it. Um, to my mind, they feel that they cannot. And uh, touching on what Reverend um, Asano just said, maybe some people believe that this whole public awareness campaign is a hoax, it's not true. So persons might have doubts in their mind as to whether to believe what is being said. A friend sent me a photograph. I want to touch on another issue um, from, I think it's Kings County in the USA, where persons are adhering to the lockdown. But what you find happen that happening, that before the, the lockdown time, persons are assembling in homes. And I see it in my own community. Persons are assembling in homes where they have house parties. So while the bars are closed, people are congregating in homes and having parties. Now the photograph that he sent, it had about 40 or so persons. All of them are now infected and four of them have so far died. So while you might see lockdown occurring, persons are finding other ways not to keep their social distance. Bishop, if I could add, um... You know, I'm reflecting upon my the words of my secondary school teacher. I think it was Pastor Crawford's mother. Um, every morning she used to say to us, we had to repeat as a mantra, what is knowledge? Knowledge is power. What is ignorance? Ignorance is the most disgraceful thing on the face of the earth. I don't want to be sung as though I'm hitting at anybody. But I think what we are seeing is that people are putting desires desires above reality and reason, which tells me that we have a serious issue with people, people's ability to think critically. You know, not one time since this core few would have started. I have ventured out at my house after six o'clock and I'm sure many of you gentlemen did the same thing. You know why? God give, give, has given us a brain to think and to reason. I think already in this program, we talked about quarantine and so on. So it's not something to show that you're, you're a Mickey Mouse or you're afraid or so on, but it's to show that you got sense. It's, it, is, it is as easy as that. I've had people in my streets walking off after six and seven and so on, and I would shout on the road, curfew, curfew. They said, okay, uncle, okay, all right, all right. So, you know, people have to stop putting you know, desires above reason and what is real, because once you start to do that, you become a liability. And I believe that, look at that gentleman standing in the sun, standing in the sun for one hour with the thing, say, I break the coffee. Why would I want to do that? Nobody's going to put me in the sun. You know why? Because I'm smart enough like that. And I, I don't understand. People have to start thinking critically. I think we also need to reinforce the importance of the curfew because what people are doing they may be living in a particular area they're not seeing much action they're not hearing much about um what is happening so they feel because okay they're not hearing or seeing the the, the um effects of this virus they can now venture out but we have to remember that 
every person reaction, the action and the reaction is important because it's a rippling effect. If everybody should say, okay, um, I can relax a little bit and, you know, go and do my own thing, then we will see a major, major disaster. But if everyone take that responsibility and just follow the guidelines, I believe we will see the, the kind of change that we want to do. So we need to, not because we're not seeing any movements or we're not seeing anything happening, people are not getting sick, that we can just relax and just, uh, you know, go and do our own thing. We need to be responsible at all times, every single day, and follow follow the the, the, the regulations. Bishop, and a lot I want to add that. I want to add, I, I wanna I add to what Pastor Paul is saying, or just concluded, deem it right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It seems as though that is not striking as quickly as some people think it should or it will not. So they're taking risks, they're taking chances, even though there's a precaution set in place to avoid people from dying. I don't think they really understand or has come to grips as yet with this COVID situation because they're still taking chances or risk dealing with something that they cannot see. I mean, if you were fighting an enemy that you can see the enemy, obviously, like Pastor Hudson knows, Reverend Dr. Hudson knows, when you fighting an enemy in a movie, you, you're looking for him to just pop his head. But this COVID is not showing any signs until it is too late. And then it doesn't only affect the individual, but it affects those that he has been associating with, she has been associating with. So people need to take precaution and protect self first, and then it will help others. The thing Only from my perspective true. is that we need people to understand the value of life. I wanted to add too that along with the, the issues we raised, I get the impression that folks might be tired being locked down <laughs> and um, you know tired being at home tired having to go home so early so they have come to a place where they want to press you know and um, create some measure of freedom for themselves though it is ignorant to do i also get that kind of impression as we evaluate why people are struggling to keep the curfew. Could it be, I'm thinking, thinking out loud, could it be that, um, you know, when people look at the news, they look at the, you know, they look to see what's happening um, outside of Guyana. Um, there are different states that notwithstanding everything that is going on, they're talking um, concerning reopening, reopening states. I mean, we're hearing that all the time. Um, could it be that people are saying, well, if them people that's so bad over there and they're talking about reopening states being that's so bad, so I mean, we could, we could move around and do what we want to do. Could that, could that actually be um, something to consider? Just my take, just trying to observe, think out loud. I think possibly, you know, because I was reading where the High Court in Malawi, that's an African country has ruled that the government um, restriction, the lockdown, it's illegal. So probably um, in tangent with what you're saying, persons might feel that we are locked down for too long and given what they see in the news or hear and um, given social media and all of that, persons are contending that look, um, the state has no right to dictate or to decide for us that we need to stay indoors. But that was just the example with Malawi. As you know, we we, look we, at the, the whole question of points of, of, of need, um, Dr. Hudson identified some signs of hope early on when he introduced the program. 
And if you didn't remember, I, I, I would like to recap. He pointed out those who have recovered. And that is a tremendous sign of hope, those who have recovered, which means that the pandemic is beatable, but one has got to um, really cooperate and benefit from the grace of God and, uh, and fight because don't, don't, don't give up. You have to fight. But the mere idea that several of our countrymen and people worldwide have um, recovered. It means that it is possible. A point of need I'd like to point out is the whole question of increased testing. We need to have more testing done. I cannot say that I am aware of the limitations or what might prevent increased testing. But in all the countries that I've been following the reports, um, those who are making significant strides are those who have tested a lot, lots of their countrymen. Um, we need to do far more than, than and that we have done. It's, um, that's just the bottom line. I think it says, um, 519 persons have been tested, of whom 441 are negative. So we've done 519. I think we can do more. And um, we are grateful that 441 are negative. And, um, and of that, there are three persons in our uh, COVID-19 ICU and 18 in our institutional quarantine. And we must commend them, 50, and 52 in isolation. We must, we must commend the authorities for having the insight and the foresight to prepare ahead of time in the likely or unlikely event that we were to have a meltdown. That's not the time to go ahead and start preparing. So a sign of hope, um, a, sign of, a, a sign of visionary leadership is that preparation is being made in advance. Um, if at the end of the day, the, 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 it's the, the facilities that were designed um, are not needed, praise God, they can be no use in, in beneficial ways to minister to the citizenry. If, however, at the end of the day, we don't have those facilities and we have a, a great demand for that kind of need, you could imagine we will rule the day and we are going to, well, not we, people will curse um, leaders for having no vision. So, we, as I'm pointing out, as, as, as a point of need is that we need to heighten our, our, our testing uh, right across the length and breadth of our nation. So I, I, I agree with you with the, the concept of the aggressive testing. Uh, I think that that's what you're suggesting. Uh, and that's where testing is done aggressively on a large scale because you'll be better able to pull in a large amount of people to, to see whether they, are, they have this disease or not. But some of the issues that we raised earlier um, about how persons are thinking, looking at New York and, and looking at, uh, they, they can't stay home because they, I think some of the reasons, I, I think it's, it goes back to one thing. However we turn it and twist it, it goes back to one thing. They might look at New York and they might say, well, look, you know, we've been home too long and so on. What they need to do is to look at Wuhan, where this thing originated. And, you know, the Chinese government, they don't make jokes. They practice totalitarianism. And, of course, those people, when we say this is it, this is it. You, Wuhan is now reopened for business, and that is where the thing started. So those who are looking at countries, they must, they must look 
also at the place where it started. And it goes right back to people, you know, really reasoning and rationalizing this thing. Those who are tired of staying home, if all of us were to stay home, the earlier we will come out. And so these are the ways that people have to start, uh, start thinking, you know. Bishop, I um, time I like to make a, uh, a reference to an article written in the Irish Times dated April 25th, 2020. And I quote, it's written by Fintan O'Toole. And I quote, the world has loved, hated, and envied the US. Now for the first time, we pity it. Over more than two centuries, the United States has stirred a very wide range of feelings in the rest of the world love and hatred, fear and hope, envy and contempt, awe and anger. But there is one emotion that has never been directed towards the US until now, pity. However, bad things are for most other rich democracies. It is hard not to feel sorry for Americans. Most of them did not vote for Donald Trump in 2016 yet they are locked down with a, a malignant narcissist who instead of protecting his people from COVID-19 has amplified its lethality. And uh, this, 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 this country, this article that the Irish Times written by Fintan O'Toole and, and the, 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 they are, the right is pointing out that this great country, America, because of the approach, needs to be pitied. You reference China and the, where this pandemic allegedly started, they're back in operation. And in America, I think the death toll today is 60 plus thousand. I'm trying to wrap my head around that 60,000 people dead. So that doesn't exude a lot of confidence. I don't know what are their problems, um, but this great country, this pandemic has um, revealed the cracks they have in their, in their society. The pandemic, that's the same pandemic. We must not allow the pandemic to exploit us and our weaknesses. That's why leadership must be able to, we must learn from others. Uh, I think somebody made reference to the fact that the Chinese practice a form of totalitarianism, that, that when they lock down, they not just lock down, they can enforce it. They ensure that everything stops. That is the nature of, of, of their politics and their society. But in, in, in countries where you have democracies and freedom, it is, it is difficult when, where you, this whole question of, of um, as having a curfew is left up to the individual. It brings to bear the point that the highest, if people don't have personal discipline, the only way you'll keep them in check is you have to corral them. If in the absence of personal discipline, you will have to become coercive. You have to have a coercive arm that would bring everybody in line. And I think um, that is the difference between what we have seen so far in China and what we are observing in these so-called democracies. So we are, plea we are making a plea with our countrymen. The thing is real. The thing is real. I admire the, um, the authorities in that they didn't only tell us this time, listen, your epicenter is Georgetown. They went a little further. And this is the first time I saw this. Um, they said it is central George Chung, I quote from a, a, a press briefing, April the 29th, 2020, 
Central Georgetown continues to be the epicenter with the positive cases identified coming from the following communities in the north of Georgetown, and their names are given Kitty, Sapphire, Torquine, Liliandal, Commons Lodge, Alberton, and Commonsburg. In the south of Georgetown, Border, Lamaha Park, South Runneveld, and Thirst Park. Now, it is not for these areas to become stigmatized. The reality is, we are now getting a real picture of where this thing is happening. Where so far, and and therefore we have to take it seriously. That is what we are appealing. Please take this seriously. I'm a little concerned that that particular statement, Rev, because people are hearing these things. It's not that they are not hearing; they they are hearing these things, and in these areas that were mentioned there must be some voice that they should or could listen to. Even if they're not hearing it from people that they like, at least somebody that is concerned in that community or in those communities must be saying to somebody, be careful how you go out and how you come in. Take precaution. There must be some voice. It means that people are not listening listening to instructions and following through because the instructions that we have been receiving and the reference that Dr. Hudson made of Wuhan, the people listened even though they know that if they fail to, there's a consequence. But I don't think that the Guyanese people looking at the consequence because they're disrespectful, if I must say. They're disrespectful to authorities that are put there to help to guide. And if we neglect that, the only other thing that we will have to do is start quarantine. And uh, God forbid, we don't want the figures to go up. So please, we're begging, stay home, observe the standard operating procedure that has been implemented. And we in can final, save. In the final moments of the program, I remember one earlier morning, I was listening to cricket down under. Um, my mother hated the fact that we have a blankets over our head. And instead of sleeping, you're listening to cricket, which she considered was a waste of time. And I heard one of our local um, journalist, commentator, describing the orderly behavior of the crowd. He said, look at how these spectators are so orderly. And one of the commentators from, from America, from Australia, said, um, well, what you call orderly, I will show you the reason why they are orderly. You notice those men with dogs, you know? Do you notice those seven men with dogs, those huge dogs? The reason why they are, those spectators are not climbing over the fence and you are criticizing the spectators in your country is that they are not only, they didn't only put fence, but they have reinforcement. If you cross, jump the fence, you have to, before you get to the players, you have to pass the dogs. In Wuhan or in China, they don't only, didn't only establish the, the parameters. They have the ability to enforce it. That is the, that is how their politics uh, work. We have a different environment in our part of the world. That's why we are appealing. We are joining, appealing to men. Let us pull ourselves together and by the grace of God, let us ensure that we stay safe so we could build this country. We're looking forward to meeting with you next week, the Lord willing. 
In the meantime, stay safe. Be blessed. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.